Did you know that the setting of your book is almost as important as the characters? Sometimes it's just as important as the characters. Are you making any of these five setting mistakes and finding that your book is a little bit flat? In this video, I'm going to talk about the five most common mistakes I see writers make when it comes to setting, what that does to your book when you make that mistake, and best of all, how to fix it, <laughs> along with some writing exercises that will allow you to implement that right away. Trust me, I know all about making writing mistakes. I wrote 10 books in eight years before I sold my first one, but I have gone on to be on the New York Times list and sell eight books in 24 countries for four of the big five. So I've worked for major publishers. I've also self-published. I've kind of done a little bit of everything with my writing career, but I have made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I remember 10 books in eight years. That means I had a lot of them that didn't have all of the elements that they needed in order to sell and to do well. And setting was one of those elements. In some books like The Chill and Home Before Dark, the setting is so crucial. It is basically the entire book. Home Before Dark, the setting is this haunted mansion that she grew up in and that she has returned to after her father's death. And that mansion becomes everything about the book. And so that setting has to be made really real. Riley Sager puts a lot of details into that setting so that you can believe it and get involved in it and see it. It's the same thing with the chill. The setting is basically a small town with a huge dam and a water reservoir. And Scott Carson puts a lot of time into describing those things and the history of it and how all that impacts the characters. So that might be the first mistake that you're making not making your setting rich enough. It has to come to life for the reader because we're reading so that we can be transported to this new place or time or experience. And in a book like, say, Game of Thrones, the setting is super important because it is not the world that we know right now in the modern day. So when you're creating a setting that is outside of 2024, you need it to be even richer so that the reader can see it and feel it and believe it. If you're feeling that your setting isn't really coming alive, then what I'd like you to do is to make up like a little mini story for a writing exercise that is about the setting itself. What's the history of it? How did this place get started? What are some of the landmarks that are there? Kind of create some of those elements. A lot of times I create a map and my maps are terrible <laughs> because I cannot draw, but my maps help me remember where things are and to add in those ordinary life elements because my books are contemporary. So I want to make sure that I have a hair salon and a dog groomer and a grocery store and all of those components that are essential in a small town because that's what I tend to write. You want to do the same. Create your world and know what's in it. You may not use all of it in the book, but I want you to create it and have it come to life. The second mistake you might be making with your setting is not making it impactful on the plot. Because if characters are going to describe something or see something, then it has to have some kind of an impact on the plot. Something I say a lot is that every word needs to move the book forward so that you're not wasting the reader's time. If you look at a book like Home Before Dark or even Hidden Pictures, the setting is super important to the plot. It basically is the plot. It creates everything that's in there. So if you read books like this, you will start to see how the author really used the setting to make the plot happen. In Home Before Dark, the house literally comes alive. And so that makes it basically another character on the page, which makes it super important. Do you have to do this? That's a question I get a lot. Do I have to put in a setting that is super important to the plot that becomes basically another character? And my answer is not always. Sometimes the setting becomes super vital to the plot. And sometimes you're writing a more character driven book where you don't necessarily have to focus a ton of your energy on the setting. But if you're not focusing it on the setting, you need to focus it on the elements that are in your character's life. And what I mean by that is in The Secret Ingredient for Happy Marriage and that whole series, the bakery where the three girls worked was very important to the book, to them, to every character that was in the book. So every time they were in the bakery, I spent some time focusing on that, on describing that. And in the first book, The Perfect Recipe for Love and Friendship, I have a whole scene where it matters so much to the character Abby that she basically recreates it in her head. Outside of that, the setting wasn't super vital. There was a couple of scenes that were, but overall the setting itself wasn't super vital because the bakery was the heart and home of this whole family. And so it became symbolic of that. And that's why I concentrated on it. For your writing exercise, I want you to think about what space matters most to my character. Write a description of it. Write up some elements that are important to your character in that room or house or location or whatever you choose. Make that setting matter a little bit more in the plot. Number three is something that a lot of fantasy, post-apocalyptic, thriller, suspense type writers end up dealing with. When you're writing books set in small towns in the modern day, it's pretty easy to get the details right. But if you're writing fantasy set in an entirely new world that you've completely made up, like Lord of the Rings, then the setting has to be believable. How do you do that though? Because you've got all these fantastical elements like dragons and witches and vampires and hobbits or whatever you have created in your world. And you do that by coming back to the touchstones that are important to all of us and that are important 
important to your character and important to your plot. So like in Lord of the Rings, nobody needed a haircut throughout the whole thing. So they didn't put a hair salon in there. But there were other elements like a government and farmers and all of those things that added that touch of realism and gave us something that we can relate to back in our own world. We may not live in Tolkien's world, but we can relate to a farmer or a government or a castle or whatever because we have familiarity with that in our own life. So when you create things like that, like in Silo, for instance, I don't know about you, but I've never lived in a silo underground. But they did have all of those things that other people would have. They had shops, they had vendors, they had a government, all of those elements that are common to everybody. So that gives your setting a little bit of realism. For your writing exercise, I want you to create one or two elements in your setting that are common to our modern day world so that the reader can recognize their own lives in that and somehow make them important to the plot. Maybe there's an important conversation that happens there or maybe a gunfight or whatever you want to have. Have those be important to the plot and thus to the character. Like you can create anything you want because it is your book and your world that you are creating. But make sure you have a couple of those that are relatable to our regular world. Fourth one kind of goes along with the second one. <clears throat> and I talked about making the setting come alive enough to become a character. That makes it more intertwined with the plot. And so things that happen in the story impact the setting and then the setting impacts the characters. Characters impact the setting and vice versa. And that becomes a whole intertwined thing. So when you have a book that is very setting centered, like the Amityville Horror or The Shining, in those books, the setting was literally a character and it had a huge impact on everything that happened in the plot. So every single scene, every single element came back to that setting. You don't necessarily have to go that deep with yours, but whatever you describe, whatever places you put your character in should definitely have an impact on the plot. So for your writing exercise, I want you to look at one of the scenes that you have and I want you to think about, could I set this somewhere else that has more impact on my character and thus more impact on the reader? Change the setting a little and see if that changes the scene and the dynamic between the character and the reader. Number five, and this is one maybe you haven't thought about, but the setting needs to change as the character grows and changes. Have you ever gone back to your old hometown and it seems completely different now that you're an adult? Maybe you have some nostalgia for it when you hated it as a teenager or even smaller than you remember, or maybe it's become more antagonistic to you as you've grown and changed. It's the same for your character. As the character evolves, the setting evolves too. For instance, in The Chill, Aaron loves the water. He spent a ton of time swimming as a kid, but as the dam begins to burst and some evil things happen. That water is no longer his friend and that water represents some very real danger for him and the people he cares about. So the setting, the water that he loves, has changed as the book evolves. In Home Before Dark, it's actually the opposite. She couldn't stand this house when she was younger because it would represented all of the bad things that happened in her life. But as she comes back to it, it begins to grow and change as she learns more about the house, about the truth that she has been burying in the past, and about who she is as a person. And so the house that she despised ends up becoming something that she cares about in a different way. When that happens, the character often sees things in a slightly different way, and you can describe them that way. Something that might have seemed dark, maybe a hallway that was dark and foreboding, and now the natural light is coming in. Or maybe the character redecorates it. Or maybe that kitchen where they had all these really bad memories is suddenly filled with the scent of warm homemade bread. Those kinds of things show the reader that the setting has changed. You don't necessarily have to come right out and say the setting has changed, but you need to add some little details that show the growth of the setting. Are you struggling with something with your writing? Then drop that question down below and I'll either answer it there or in a video because my goal is to help you write a better book that readers love and you love. You can also come to our live writing sprints on Fridays at four o'clock Eastern. And in that hour, we all write together in little sprints, little short bits, and then we talk about writing in between. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to hit subscribe and I will see you on the other side of the page.